Most people don't even know it exists. But every email you send, every video you stream, and yes, every hack that's ever happened, all go through this invisible seven-step system called the OSI model. But here's what no one tells you. Hackers don't attack the internet. They attack specific layers of the OSI model. And defenders? They use it to spot, isolate, and stop threats before they spread. And by the end of this video, not only will you understand the OSI model, you'll see how each layer is attacked and defended in the real world. Let's go layer by layer, and I'll show you exactly where systems break down. Imagine trying to deliver a message across the world, but every country speaks a different language, uses different formats, and follows different rules. That's what networking was like before the OSI model. Chaotic, incompatible, and unreliable. So in the 1980s, the OSI model was introduced, a seven-layer framework where each layer handles a specific role in communication. Think of it like a postal system. Packaging, addressing, delivery, translation, all handled at different levels. Here's the twist. Most cyber attacks don't break all seven layers. They only need to break one. Let's find out which, starting from the bottom. Layer one is raw, primitive and called physical layer. It's all about the hardware, the cables, the fiber optics, the Wi-Fi signals, the blinking router lights. At this level, data isn't really data. It's just voltages, binary pulses, zeros and ones, flying through wires. I once had a friend who thought he was under a cyber attack. Everything was down, panic mode. Turned out, someone kicked the ethernet cable loose under his desk. Classic layer one, fail. But attackers don't just kick cables. If they can physically touch your network, they can tap cables, intercept signals, or even install a hardware keylogger between your keyboard and computer. In high security environments, attackers have hidden rogue devices inside walls. Layer one may be dumb, but it's not harmless. How do pros defend it? Start with access control. Secure your physical devices. Lock the server and network rooms. Shield network cables with anti-tamper tech. And don't ever trust a USB drive you didn't format yourself. You can't defend a network if someone's standing right next to your switch. Layer 2. Data link layer. Now we've got a signal, but which device should receive it? Layer 2 handles MAC addressing, your device's unique network ID. If layer 1 is the road, Layer 2 is the signboard that says Apartment 3B. That's the MAC address, your local hardware identity. Let's say you're in a co-working space. Everyone's on the same Wi-Fi. Your device wants to talk to the printer. It uses MAC addresses to do that. But attackers can spoof it. They pretend to be the router or the printer. That's ARP spoofing, and now all your traffic is going through them. That's how hackers perform man-in-the-middle attacks. They impersonate the network and quietly watch everything. What do pros do? They configure smart switches to only accept known MAC addresses. They enable dynamic ARP inspection to block fake ARP replies. And they segment the network, isolating risk. Layer 2 is the local spy game. If anyone can pretend to be your neighbor, you're in trouble. Layer 3, network layer. Now we're leaving the local network. Layer 3 is about routing. It finds the best path across the internet using IP addresses. Let's say you are in Mumbai, the server in London. Layer 3 figures out the best route and sends your data on its way. But here's the thing. This is where the heavy traffic attacks happen, like DDoS flooding your IP with junk data, or IP spoofing faking origin addresses to bypass filters. GitHub was hit with the largest DDoS attack ever over 1.3 terabits per second using layer 3 logic so what do defenders do they use firewalls and routers to block bad ips they geo block traffic from high-risk countries they use intrusion detection systems and they rate limit requests layer 3 is where defenders start playing chess you're not just blocking you're thinking ahead layer 4 transport layer now the data on its way but how do you make sure it arrives in the right order, without loss? That's layer 4. It uses TCP and UDP. TCP is reliable, 
UDP is fast. You watch Netflix, it's UDP. You send a file to your boss, it's TCP. Here's what attackers do. They scan for open ports, the doors into your network. They use SIN floods to send thousands of fake handshakes or launch UDP floods to overwhelm your services without even completing a connection. Defenders fight back by closing unused ports, using firewalls to control what comes in, and monitoring connection patterns for spikes or anomalies. Layer 4 is where most scans begin. If you're listening, attackers will not. Layer 5. Session Layer. You log into your bank. Behind the scenes, your browser starts a session. Layer 5 manages that session, when it starts, pauses, resumes, or ends. Here's how attackers take advantage. They hijack your session. They steal your session token. And now they're logged in as you. They don't need your password, just the token. Remember FireSheep? It let anyone hijack Facebook sessions from open Wi-Fi networks. So how do we stop it? Use HTTPS. Generate secure tokens that expire, re-authenticate for sensitive operations, and kill idle sessions quickly. If your session isn't protected, neither is your identity. Layer 6, Presentation Layer. It is the translator. It makes data readable by decrypting, decompressing, or converting formats. HTTPS lives here. So does Base64 encoding, zip compression, and video decoding. But this layer is also where encryption can fail. If a server is using weak SSL or outdated TLS, attackers can break it. Remember Heartbleed? It was a vulnerability in OpenSSL that leaked memory. That's passwords, session data, even private keys, all exposed. Defenders secure this layer by using modern TLS 1.2 or 1.3. They disable old SSL versions and regularly patch encryption libraries. This is the last line between safe and stolen. You break this layer, you break everything. Layer 7, Application Layer. This is where you and I live. Websites, apps, APIs, it's what we see and interact with. But it's also where hackers get creative. They inject SQL into login forms. They run JavaScript in your browser using XSS. They trick you into logging into a fake site pixel perfect but deadly. The Equifax breach? That was layer 7. An unpatched web app exposed on 147 million people's data. Defenders use secure coding practices. They validate all inputs. They run vulnerability scans. They patch fast. And they use web application firewalls to catch what developers miss. This layer is exposed to the world and that makes it the most attacked of all. Now you understand the OSI model isn't a textbook diagram, it's the battlefield. Every hacker picks a layer, every defender prepares for one. Your job is to know where each layer ends and where the next weakness begins. So which layer surprised you the most? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe because next we are diving into the common protocols every cybersecurity beginner needs to master and that's when everything starts making sense.